Vivian Lee's passionate affair with Laurence Olivier, a timeline of Vivian Lee and Laurence Olivier's tragic love story. The couple's lost love letters finally shed some light on their whirlwind romance. The Hollywood love story of Vivian Lee and Laurence Olivier is remembered today as one filled with passion, romance, betrayal and heartbreak. Despite the couple's hardships and Lee's breakdowns both on and off stage, newly uncovered love letters between the couple reveal important details that outline the evolution of their romance. These letters first came to light as part of an archive purchased from the Vivian Lee estate during an auction. The archive consists of several scrapbooks, Lee's diary, photographs and several letters, some over 20 pages long, between Lee and her second husband, Laurence Olivier. Correspondence with other important figures also features in the archive, including letters to and from T.S. Eliot, Marilyn Monroe, Winston Churchill and Queen Elizabeth II. Oh my darling little love, I do long for you so, wrote Olivia in one of his letters to Lee early in their affair. Oh my heart's blood, it is unbearable without you. Vivian Lee took her first major step into the public eye when she was cast as Henrietta in the 1935 play The Mask of Virtue. Lee's performance led to film offers that quickly transformed the young actress into one of Hollywood's most beloved starlets. Born Vivian Mary Hartley, the future Hollywood actress took her first role at the age of three. Over time, the Indian-born actress developed a passion for acting and changed her stage name after marrying her first husband, Herbert Lee Holman, a barrister who disliked the theatre. Her husband's disapproval for her passion in theatre was just one aspect of Lee and Holman's unhappy marriage. This would ultimately lead to a love affair between Lee and Laurence Olivier that continues to haunt Hollywood to this day. Lee and Olivier first met after one of the actress's stage performances in The Mask of Virtue in London in 1936. Olivier, 28, stopped by to congratulate the rising star, then in her early twenties, on her performance. Though Olivier was married to actress Jill Esmond at the time, and Lee was also married with a child, the pair took an immediate liking to one another. In 1936, Lee saw Olivier in a play and whispered to her friend, that's the man I'm going to marry. Her friend pointed out that she was already married, and so was he. That didn't stop Lee from visiting Olivia in the dressing room where, as she was leaving, she kissed the back of his neck. They were cast in fire over England together and a long guilt-ridden affair began. In 1940, they finally divorced their spouses and got married. From then on, Lee was taken with Olivia's charm and magnetism and Olivia was drawn to her in a way he was with no other woman. Olivia admitted he had settled for Esmond out of fear he wouldn't do any better than her. It is said that the couple's relationship was not intimate and that Esmond preferred women. Still they had a son, Tarquin, who was born in August of 1936. I couldn't help myself with Vivian, no man could, Olivia said. I hated myself for cheating on Jill, but then I had cheated before, but this was something different. This wasn't just out of lust. This was love that I really didn't ask for, but was drawn into. One year after Lee and Olivia met, they were both cast in fire over England, where they played love interests. The pair began to spend time together on and off set during which they ultimately gave in to their attraction to each other and began their secret affair. This wasn't just out of lust. This was love that I really didn't ask for, but was drawn into. The following year was a crucial time for Olivia and Lee as both actors were trying to broaden their careers. 
When Olivia was offered the part of Heathcliff in the 1939 film adaptation of Wuthering Heights, he left Lee behind in England, where she began to show the first signs of a lifelong mental illness. Because there was no diagnosis or treatment for bipolar disorder at the time, Lee did not receive help for her condition. During the filming of the 1938 film A Yank in Oxford, Lee suffered frequent mood swings and gained a reputation as unreasonable and difficult to work with. Despite this, Lee was offered the part of Isabella, a secondary character in Wuthering Heights. Lee turned down the offer, disappointed she was not offered the lead role of Cathy. During their time apart, Lee and Olivia exchanged steamy love letters. In an undated letter, experts believed to have been written between 1938 and 1939, Olivia wrote, I woke up absolutely raging with desire for you, my love. Oh dear God, how I did want you. Perhaps you were stroking your darling self. Lee responded, writing, Oh dear sweet, I haven't done anything. If we loved each other only with our bodies, I suppose it would be all right. I love you with much more than that. I love you with, oh, everything somehow, with a special kind of soul. Eventually, Olivia's success spread to Lee when he recommended her to a theatre agent for the role of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. After some consideration, Lee was offered the part and she gladly accepted, heading to Los Angeles for filming. Working with her co-stars proved to be difficult though, as some felt her manic behaviour often made it hard to work with her. Lee often wrote to Olivia, who was filming in New York at the time, to discuss this and other worries. She felt the film would end up being a failure in her career and was worried about the final outcome. In a letter to Lee, Olivia advised her not to think down on herself. You have got to be damn smart to make a success of your career in pictures, which is essential for your self-respect. I am afraid you may become just boring, never to me, but to yourself and because of that to others. It seemed to be Olivia's letters that kept Lee going, and her performance in Gone with the Wind ultimately brought her much success and fame on the silver screen. The next year was filled with good news for the couple. Lee became the first British woman to win a Best Actress Oscar for her performance as Scarlett O'Hara. The couple also received the news that the divorces they'd requested from their spouses in England had been granted. Even though neither Olivier nor Lee had custody of their respective children, they were now free to marry whenever they pleased. Until this point, Lee and Olivia had been forced to keep their relationship out of the public eye. In a letter to Lee, Olivia advised her it was for the best. We are a popular scandal, or rather a public one, he wrote. Therefore, it is only a reasonably good taste to be as unobtrusive as possible. Can you dance and be gay and carry on like the gay, happy, hypocrite days? No, my love, you cannot. Why? Because of your fame, tripled with our situation, quadrupled with the fame thereof. The couple wed soon after on August 31, 1940, in Santa Barbara, California. This is the end of part one of the video. Was it right when Vivian Lee could not resist Olivia's charm and magnetism, although they were both married? Their passion ultimately led to a love affair. What would you do in this situation?